welcome to Nana's Cookery. I'm Gloria Donahue and I'm your host. I'm going to make something for you now which has gained me a reputation. People look forward to seeing me around Christmas time because I've made almond butter crunch for probably over 40 years. It comes from a recipe from this cookbook, An Old Better Homes and Gardens. This is actually my second version which I bought in a used bookstore because I had so misused my other one and I've just changed it a little bit. But basically it's going to be an oven butter crunch which requires to begin with two sticks of butter, one and a third cups sugar, three tablespoons of water, and one tablespoon of corn syrup. We're going to cook those all together to 300 degrees and add one cup of toasted almonds which I toasted prior a slivered, slivered almonds. Then we're going to pour it out. And when we do that, I'll show you the different things that you can do with it. When it's cool, we're going to coat it with milk chocolate. And that would be about eight ounces of milk chocolate. I buy it in bulk and melt it, but you can buy milk bars and do it. And some uh, chopped toasted almonds, between a third and a half a cup. So join me now as we start it. People think it's really hard. It's not, oh, I forgot. You need a cooktop a pot, and a candy thermometer. So stay with me and we'll do it. Very simple. I'm going to cut the butter up just to make it melt a little quicker. I used to melt the butter first and add the sugar. I found that was not good because sometimes the butter got too hot. So this way they all cook together and it's really better. There's my two sticks of butter, regular sugar, a cup, and a third of a cup. I already measured three tablespoons of water. I'm going to do one tablespoon of clear corn syrup. I make five or six recipes of this every Christmas and give it out as gifts to family and, and friends. We're going to start this. This is a new cooktop for me, so I have to sort of feel it out. I haven't made this candy on it before, and this is a high uh, cook burner. So I'm not going to start it off too high at the beginning. I want to melt that butter and sugar together. The whole process is going to take about a half an hour. Uh, you'll find it will go to 234 pretty quickly and then really, really slowly beyond that. You do not have to stand here with it all the time. You just come out. Once it's all together, sort of dissolved, I then stir it, come back and forth until it hits 300. 300 is what they call hard crack. If you've ever made candy, there are different temperatures that are important. The fudge is your softball, and that would be a little tiny bit of the, of the mixture in cold water will feel like a softball. You can do it by hand. A candy thermometer is good, though. And then as it progresses, it gets into different cooking levels, and the 300 is the hard crack, so that when this is done and it's cool, I can literally break that and it's going to crack. It's not going to be flexible. It's going to crack. We're going to stir it now with a wooden spoon. And again, I'm just, I just want to melt the sugar and the butter, but, but I want to start off fairly low and then I'm going to turn it up. As you can see, our mixture is merrily boiling along. It's nowhere near done. It's still bright yellow. We're going for, it would be like a vanilla caramel look. I'm going to put the candy thermometer in every once in a while. Somehow I've lost my little rest, so I don't really want it to be on the bottom of the pan. That would give me a false reading. So I'm going to take it in and out as I need it, rest it on something in between. As you can see, we're just going to come back every once in a while and check on it.
Yes, I am. Hi, you can see it continues to change. It's thicker. It's getting more of a tannish color. It's going to keep on going. Now I have to watch it more carefully. Not until it reaches about 275 do you pay much attention to it. Just stir it every once in a while. Make sure your heat is not too high. But be ready to move when it goes to 300. Have your nuts ready. Have your pan ready. I have a cup of toasted almond slivers. I'm going to put it on a regular cookie sheet. I find you do not have to grease it. There's enough butter in the recipe. It will move later. So it's okay, but you must have the pan ready and the nuts ready because when it hits 300, you're going to have to move right away. Well, it's done. I'm removing it from the heat. It's reached 300. I'm putting the toasted almonds in. And you can see the color of the candy. Now, it's pretty flexible now while it's still really hot. I'm just going to make five little globs on this cookie sheet. And the reason I do that is because that's how I do many of my Christmas things. They're then big enough to fit in a quart uh, baggie and you just seal it in that way I can put a bow on it and give it. Uh, there are other ways to do it. If you do it to approximately a 13 by 9 shape, you can then cut it into four rectangles and they will fit in those postage mailers. You can also, of course, make bigger pieces and just break them into pieces because that's how you're going to eat it. Nobody is, is really going to eat this in one piece. Except I can tell you a couple of funny stories. My friends tell me, I give them out to friends from newcomers, the group I told you I belong to before, every year. And a couple of them told me, and I give it out at the Christmas luncheon, so a couple of them told me one year they're driving home from the Christmas luncheon and they stopped at a light and they looked over to discover they're both eating their Christmas candy. And the other, because it's to them and not their husbands. The other funny one is one who's moved away. And I didn't think she was coming to the Christmas luncheon, so I mailed it. She was at the Christmas luncheon and I said, oh, I, I sent it off to you. It will probably come today. And her husband told her, told her not only had it come, he'd eaten it. So <laughs> it's very popular. And it is fun to make. It's a wonderful thing for people to remember. As you'll notice, they're not all the same size. Let them fight about that. I'm not going to worry about it. It is flexible somewhat while it's still very hot. I wouldn't worry about the size. We're going to let that cool. And when it cools, I'm going to cover it with milk chocolate and uh, and finely chopped toasted almonds. Then it will be then after the chocolate uh, cools, it will be ready to go. Hi, welcome back. This is our almond butter crunch after it's cooled enough on the cookie sheet. And as you can see, I can move them around. You do not need to butter the sheet. If you wanted to do it in even smaller pieces, as I mentioned, one year I did a whole sheet, quickly cut it into rectangles takes a lot of time. If you're going to do anything with it, you must do it while, you're, while it's still hot. You can break it now, but you cannot cut it. I'm going to quickly pulse these, the other uh, one half cup of toasted almonds. Processor is great for doing things like this. And if I put the little thing in there, I like to hold it. I can keep one eye on it, and that's about what I want. I don't want them finely ground, but I want them enough to cover the chocolate pieces. I'm going to put it on with a spoon, but then I'm going to spread it with an offset spatula. I have a couple of these. This is a small one, and I have a long one for uh, cakes. And they're great because you can hold it like this because of the offset, and it'll help spread it. We're going to spread the chocolate over... over the candy. And once it's cold, you can actually, well not cold, but cool, then of course the, the chocolate will harden. But you wanna put the nuts on while the chocolate is still, you know, I'm not even going to use the offset spatula for this because it moves pretty quickly with the spoon. You don't have to take it right to the edge 
because I don't want it to go over the edge and you can see there's still some movement in it. So I'm going to take it pretty close to the edge. Now I didn't temper it. I didn't do anything special with this chocolate. I'm not great at tempering chocolate and to be honest, I'm going to cover it with nuts so I'm not worried if, it, if, if it's going to change a little bit in color. It will still be delicious. As I said, this was just regular milk chocolate. I melted it in the microwave. Keep an eye on it. It'll take you a few minutes. Don't do it at too high a heat because you want it to melt consistently. And when it's still even holding its shape but feels soft, it might be melted enough to use. And then you can just take it out and spread it like this. Did you notice there's a little piece missing here that was here? I ate it. We're just going to sprinkle. This is it. I hate to show you this really because now my friends will know I wasn't going to all the work every year that they thought I was because it's a really pretty simple process. I would say I'm probably going to use about a third of the cup maybe of the almonds. Don't worry. When you do things, just make sure you do use enough. But don't worry about, oh, I must use it all. If it looks like it's plenty, then it may be plenty. Now we're going to let these firm up again. And then they'll be ready to eat or give away.